and a few other important features. One would be the wind filter. The wind filter is a feature available on interchangeable lens camera that lowers the amount of wind noise that gets recorded during noisy outdoor film shoots. The feature reduces the overall low bass sounds, which has the effect of removing the sound of wind from the recordings. Unfortunately, this feature takes away a portion of the audio spectrum, meaning that the rest of the sounds do not end up sounding as natural as they could sound. It is advisable not to use this feature if there is no wind present during the shoot. And another one would be external microphone. Good DSLR or mirrorless camera systems usually have a 3.55 mm diameter microphone input terminal. This input terminal allows the camera person to connect a high quality external microphone. Since the camera's onboard microphone is terrible, the microphone input solves this problem by allowing the onboard microphone to be bypassed and replaced with a much higher quality audio recording device. And we also have headphones. Most good semi-pro and professional DSLR or mirrorless camera systems come with a 3.55 mm diameter mini output plug where headphones can be connected. This plug allows the camera person to monitor the sound during movie shooting. Though it is possible to simply record audio using the visual audio meter, listening to the audio track as it is recorded provides that extra level of security and confidence that the audio video track was recorded right. And also we have histogram display. The histogram is a two dimensional chart that has a horizontal and a vertical axis. The horizontal axis represents the different brightness levels that are possible. On the left side of the horizontal axis are the dark levels, and on the right side are the bright levels. The vertical axis simply represents the quantity of pixels for the different levels of brightness on the horizontal axis. Histograms can be underexposed, exposed to the left, neutrally exposed, exposed to the right, or overexposed. The different levels of exposures are explained below. Underexposed. When an image is underexposed, the histogram will show a grouping of pixels on the left side of the graph. Unfortunately, once an image is underexposed, it'll be very difficult to recover the image detail with post production software. This type of exposure will be visibly grainy. You must avoid underexposing images. Carry low F number lenses with you and consider opening the shutter for longer periods of time. And we also have exposed to the left. Exposing to the left is okay. Exposing to the left happens often during nighttime shooting. Bringing up this exposure in post can lead to noise. It is important to use a low F setting or shutter speed in these circumstances. And we also have neutral or optimal exposure. It is a good practice to film shots with pixels evenly distributed throughout the tonal range. From this point, you can adjust the image up a level in the brightness or down a level in brightness, according to what level would make the image most cinematic. Though this exposure style may result in an image that may sometimes seem a bit too dark or too bright, the exposure style provides a lot of latitude to tweak and post. Another interesting exposure is exposed to the right. When exposing to the right, be careful not to overexpose. This type of exposure will produce an image that does not have a lot of noise. Though it may seem bright while recording, it is likely possible to bring it down the image a little bit in post. And lastly, we have overexposed. If the image shows up on the histogram as a cluster of pixels on the right side of the graph, then the image is overexposed. Under this condition, you will have to use a smaller ISO setting. The lower ISO settings are less sensitive to light. The lower settings will capture less light. Therefore, more light is needed for a good exposure. Using a lower ISO setting will result in an image with less noise or grain. Conversely, the higher settings are more sensitive to light. The higher settings will capture more light. This means that less light is needed for a good exposure. However, using a higher ISO setting will result in an image with more noise or grain. Remember, if highlights are blown out, then it will be difficult, if not impossible, to recover information from such an area. It is best to adjust the ISO accordingly so as to avoid overexposure.